It's Chelsea. It's Nina. And, and you're, you're in the, the Critics Kingdom. Hello. Hey. And welcome back to our third and final installment of the Cheetah Girls Suite. Yes. The Cheetah Girls One World, released in 2008, uh, the last of the Cheetah Girls movies. Yep. And um, the end of an era, if you would say. The end of something. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> the end of something. We're going to get into sure. that. Um, <laughs> but uh, this was one that both of us had never seen before. Yeah. So this was our first time watching it collectively. And uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, Should we, we get right into the recap? Yeah, we can get right into the recap. So this one starts off with um, our three girls. Uh, Raven is not in this one. So it's just Aqua, Chanel, and Dorinda. They're imagining themselves like performing for sold out audiences and like doing this really big performance. And then we come back to see that they're actually just at an audition, which they're doing horribly yet. Um, <laughs> they actually weren't doing that bad, but the guy just was not feeling it. Um, we then learn that they've basically been auditioning, but nothing is really happening. And they're all, um, they've graduated high school and they're all about to go to college in the fall, basically. Um, Aqua going to Columbia and Galleria is allegedly already at Cambridge, which is why she's not present for this whole thing. Um, and this place takes place in the summer. So Chanel is like, okay guys, well, let's go to this Indian restaurant they go to it to eat <laughs> after this horrible audition. They go there. She gets a call from this guy saying, we want you guys to be in a Hollywood movie. Can you audition for us? Um, they get super excited, sing a song, you know. <laughs> Another song. There's like the a, Indian there's restaurant. the elephant God is like in the background. So you know, where, you know where we're about. Yes, Ganesh. So you know where we're about to go. Um, they go to this audition with this young Indian man. And he's like, I love you guys. You're great. I want to take you all over, you know to this movie you're all hired so they're super excited because like i said nothing has been working out for them um and then he's like great we'll book you guys flights all to bombay and they're like what <laughs> bomb what and then poor chanel they realized did not like hear when he said that this was a bollywood film not a hollywood film and she thinks bombay is in like california or something so aqua and dorinda are looking at her like girl what we have things to do. Like, what are you talking about? And Whole lives to leave. Literally. And then the young man's like, is there any reason you can't do it? And, like, they're like, you know, we'll make it work. So Chanel convinces them, like, yes, we need to go to India. Like, when else are we going to go to India, girls? And they're like, you know what? You're right. So <laughs> they put their things on hold. Meanwhile, the guy, we see um, a friend of his come up. And he's like, yo, you only told your uncle that you were going to hire one person. Why are there three <laughs> girls now going on this trip? And he's like, don't worry, I'll calm him down. Messy men. Literally. So the next thing we see is the cheetahs in India, and they go up to Bollywood Studios, and they meet the young man again, and he's like, this is where we're going to do the movie, blah, blah, blah. And then his uncle comes out, because he's like, my uncle's a really famous producer, and this is my first ever movie I'm directing and writing. So they're like okay cool so they say hi to the uncle the uncle is like hold up i asked for one girl not three <laughs> and he's like what are you doing to me nephew and then he's like you gotta pick son like i don't really care but all i know is you don't have a budget for three girls so you gotta pick one and they're basically remaking this old movie that the uncle apparently did called namaste bombay um but he wants to do it with an american lead so he, they're like, okay, well, we're going to have to have some, he's like, we're going to have to have some sort of competition between the three of you and only one of you will last because otherwise you're staying on a free holiday in India on my dime and I don't play that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so at that point they're like, okay, well, I guess we just have to like learn basic stuff. They get introduced to their co-star who is a guy named um, Rahim and he's clearly like a very popular like, Bollywood actor or whatever and all the girls are falling over for him but he's actually falling over for the choreographer who they meet um, who is like oh you Americans think you know everything about dancing and you don't <laughs> they have this we they have the best song then at that point that's they in do. this entire dance thing. me if you can it's quite it's, it's literally like fantastic. American styles versus like traditional Indian dance styles it's very good like we said um and they end up like all getting along afterward because they're like but we're all united in dance um so, <laughs> they so, don't say it like they that. don't say it like <laughs> that's, that that's, that's the gist that's the impression that you get <laughs> they're hugging by the end yeah they're all hugging by the end 
So fast forward, you know, the girls are like, you know, in their enjoying their time in India. They meet a, a guru who is like, oh, you guys have to tie something to this tree and your dreams will come true. And once they come true, take it off the tree. And they're like, all right, bet. So they do that. <laughs> <laughs> they all wish like, you know, something with the cheetah girls. But also during this, Aqua has been like, I guess... Calling this man in tech support. It's so strange. It's the weirdest plot line ever. But she's been it's calling so this strange. man in tech support. And I, I and she starts like, she's been calling him since like she was in the US. Like this wasn't something that just happened when she came over to India. Um, but she like was purposefully breaking her computer so she would have an excuse to call Kevin. Um, There's anyways, a number after his name, but yeah, it's irrelevant. Yeah, it's like Kevin79 or something. Yeah, yeah. something. <laughs> anyways, they end up meeting because we find out Kevin is actually in India, in Bombay, and they meet, you know, like after she the, calls him dog. once. Yeah, they meet him, and then they're, like, in love immediately, and he's like, my name's not Kevin, it's Amar. And then she's like, what? <laughs> she um, literally goes, you don't sound like you're from yes. India. Which is... Continue, yes, not a thing that you should say to anybody ever. Um, but Especially in their country. <laughs> literally, you're in his country. But yes, yeah, so they essentially fall in love. It's real cute. Um, we learned that Dorinda and Joaquin have broken up from Cheetah Girls 2. She's not with her count anymore, and now she's just a man-hater. <laughs> That's an and she doesn't want Chanel or Aqua to focus on men either. Um, and Chanel, meanwhile, is getting closer to the young director boy who has taken a shining to her. So by this point, we see that like all of the girls have kind of found a guy that they're kind of cool with, and Dorinda ends up getting along very well with um, Rahim. Yeah, with Rahim, the the actor boy, because she wants to she wants to set him up with the choreographer, because she's like, clearly you guys like each other. You keep falling down whenever you're like in the presence of <laughs> literally one literally tripping all over, literally themselves, falling down, which is entertaining. Yes. So he's like, okay, well, Dorinda, Rahim's like, I will help you if you help me. I'll help you get your the main part of the movie if you help me get with um, the choreographer named Gita. And then Aqua has Kevin, aka Amar, who's like, I'm gonna help you because they get to a point in the film where um, the uncle is like, well, you don't have any more money for you to actually be able to afford expensive things, nephew. Like a set. So. Like a set. So like he's like, you're going to have to do this like abandoned set. And his nephew's like, that's that's just not going to work. <laughs> For the so, wedding scene. And when he meets video. Amar, that we end up finding out that Amar, Amar is like a Maharaja and like a super rich like royal guy. So he's like, let's just film this in my family's hometown of, um, I think they're in the Rajasta region. I can't remember. But some, but not in Bombay anymore. Yeah. So they go there. They film in, like, they, they are in the his family's huge castle um, it's really nice. The girls are like getting ready for the competition against each other for the first time. And, um, all the guys are like, well, I'm going to help you out, you know? Um, and then they basically pit them all against each other. And for some reason they never talk to each other about this, <laughs> which doesn't seem realistic at all. Um, really doesn't. but you know, they finally have the competition with the uncle judging it. And then the uncle chooses Chanel because at the end of the day, the director is his nephew. Um, and the the director is one that has the most the most sway, and Chanel I guess performed the best. Um, we also hear the boys performing too, which is okay. <laughs> it, it is. It's it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. Nothing so, to write home about, but yeah, yeah, it's fine. So then Dorinda and Aqua are like, oh, okay, well Chanel, you got what you wanted because you you know put your feminine wiles all over Vikram, the director. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, I guess we'll just head our asses on home. <laughs> and, um, and you know, then, of course, that's not how it actually happens. And they get back together. At the end, all the girls, like, are united. And they're like, well, who are we actually going to get to cast? Because Chanel's like, I can't do this because it wouldn't be fair to the other Cheetah Girls. Mm-hmm. And so Vikram's like, okay, but, like, who are we going to get to be my main character? And at that point, they see Rahim and Gita finally get together and, like, sing to each other and dance to each other um, across the little plaza in the middle of the house. And they're like, these two, this is who your, you know, your your stars are going to be, they tell the uncle and Vikram. And then Vikram's, like, immediately into it. The uncle takes a little bit of convincing because he's like, nobody wants to see a choreographer. (laughs) But then he's finally like, yeah, you know what, this makes sense. And then at that point... We see them, like, I guess, film, like, the big wedding scene. Yeah. And there's, like, an, you know, all the cheetahs are riding an elephant. And then uh, 
Raheem and Gita are like coming out like you know on the towers and it's 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 cute there's a bunch of flowers and petals being thrown everywhere and they're all singing about one world one life one love yeah you know <laughs> all that stuff it's and a very it's a very large finale dance number it's too. a very typical like what you would see in a Bollywood film that's what they were basically copying um I won't say that they did it well or not but that's what they're basically copying so, yeah, I mean, that's like a recap of Cheetah Girls One World, and we'll be right back to get into the review. Okay, so not <laughs> not my that might be my my word of choice for this particular one. How like how about no? Yeah. Generally speaking, it, it's it's a lot of things and none of them are good. So <laughs> I think we just start off with that. I I think you lose so much of the essence. I think that we lost it Cheetah Girls. a long time ago. We lost it on the second one, but it's just gone on this one. Like it is even down to their voices, which I find <laughs> like even down to the literal songs. Um, just because clearly Raven's voice added a like a depth, a soprano depth that is necessary to yeah. just drown yeah. how they sound. Um and you see it what's the name of that one? I wrote down Fly Away Highway. I know that that's not the it name was, of the song. Um, don't fly away. Don't fly away. <laughs> you weren't far off. You yeah. weren't far off at that's all. That's why I was like, that's not the name of the song. But um, yeah, even like, especially with Don't Fly Away, like, it's just not, like, you can't have those voices that high. There's no, there's no harmony to the harmonies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that's, even musically, it's sort of disappointing. Yeah, they just don't have the depth anymore. And I know we were both very confused as to why they didn't, like, like why you wouldn't have brought in, like, Aqua's twin from the books for this one and, like, brought mm-hmm. in another singer. Or just even if you weren't going to do that, like, bring on some cousin. You, like, you could, it's, it's, a, it's a show. And it's a Disney thing. They could have made up any sort of excuse. But I think just having a fourth member who either was, like, an, a grounded alto or, like, a soprano that was similar to Raven would have really helped bring out a lot of the songs because it's so light. And I think, especially based on what we said in the second one, where they finally achieved, like, that, like, perfection yeah. vocally. It was so It was, pleasant. like, everybody's voices were great. <laughs> the, the single thing one. about that film that was pleasant. It was literally, like, they fi- like their voices had, like, the, the grown woman depth. Like, it was just everything musically was correct in that one. And then this one, you just completely lost that basis that you would even had in the second one yeah so that was that was one thing <laughs> that was <laughs> that was not great about this and and, and especially i just want to like drive home this point about like they could have brought on a fourth voice because they really do so many other things that don't make any sense yeah they really could they could <laughs> for the continuation of this, and they and they do it anyway so why not just why not bring another voice on but that's a I don't think it's a personal qualm, but that's not the main point of this. <laughs> I had, I just have a, like, so we talked last time about how they've essentially taken them and turned them into Global Get Down and the irony in that. Yeah. And this is just further proof that that is exactly what's happened. Down to Raven leaving. Like, <laughs> yeah, literally, literally, literally down, down to, to Raven about leaving. To, it's so accurate. Um, listen to it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Ah, life imitating art. Or I guess life in art imitating each other. The art. Just commercialism, capitalism, all of all of it. The the whole thing. But I think in this one what you see more and it is because, you know, Bollywood is an established existing mm-hmm. you know film like, industry. Mm-hmm. You s I think you really see it. and Chelsea you s- use this term and I think it's very appropriate. Um just sort of like the cinematic voyeurism Mm -hmm. that's that's what this film is that's what it it feels like with like this place and these people in this place therefore just operating as a backdrop but they have no real relevance to the story or the characters of the plot 
um, there's nothing about this story that has to be told here in this way. Yeah. This story literally, because the whole thing with the director is that he, uh, he's like, if he doesn't, <laughs> if he doesn't create a successful film, he's gonna go yes, to, dental to dental school. school. Yeah. Like his parents are like, we don't support your dreams. <laughs> um, but it's like you could have done that exact plot with a Hollywood director. Like you could have said it in L.A. and that would have still held up. Yeah. yeah. Everything that happens in this could have happened in America, in L.A. In Hollywood, and it all would have held up. You'd be like, okay, yeah, that tracks. Yeah. Like, may, all right, so maybe now Amar isn't a Maharaja. Like, he's a, he's just a, you know, he's a producer's kid or something right. like that. But it still would have, would have tracked. Yeah. Uh, and it just, I think that, like, you know, the same is true of Barcelona, for sure, in the second one. But with this one, again, because of the huge film industry that exists there, it becomes a lot more sort of pointed that vo- that cinematic voyeurism that's happening and a lot less kosher in my humble opinion yeah and that's also not to say of course that spanish cinema does not exist it does but it's also like not at the level like like like, like it, if we're just being honest like, yeah like, yeah like, it's not and i would also say that it's not dis- it's all right i'm not saying that's not distinct like obviously every culture's mm-hmm. c- but it's still a western and there's lens. stories but it's yeah. It is Western cinema. Yeah. Right? It's still a Western lens. Indian, like, Bollywood is specifically not Western mm-hmm. cinema. There mm-hmm. are things that they do, and it was, like, one of the few things that I did sort of like that the fact that it existed in this film was that they, you do get references to, like, Bollywood tableaus. Um, like, for example, there's a, there's a whole scene that's, like, kind of going to happen in every Bollywood film that is a romance where there's in the same way that like in Amer- in the in Hollywood we have like a meet cute for love yeah. stories they have this sort of situation of you know in older situations people can't touch right so it's this gaze that's happening but usually through some sort of like partly veiled watching if that makes sense usually of the male character onto the female love interest or a potential love interest. So it's sort of like the first time that they're seeing them. Or the first time that they're seeing them in that light. And it's usually like sometimes they'll be in a forest. Or, you know, maybe someone's bathing in a in a river. So you're doing it through trees. Like often that's how you get it. So that you get these um, sort of pillars. Various pillars for them to look through. But it can also happen in like a palace. With many pillars and things like that. Which is what you get here. So that exists here. But like that is something that is... Again, like those types of tableaus are very distinct to Bollywood, and it is coming directly out of Indian storytelling, Indian traditions, various traditions, but and their relationship to the image, which is distinct and different from the Western relationship to the image and the rest Western relationship to narrative and how we just literally how we put stories together. So when you have a film, like when you have a film where they're there and they don't have to be there. And then they're engaging with it, but on this very, very surface level, again, like, it just, it leaves a sort of bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, well, because, again, it's just, it's the same problem we had in the second one, where it's just, like, why are we here? Why are we doing this? Why, what does, how does this relate to the girls in any way that that's authentic? Like, it's like the authentic, authenticity is gone. That was in the first film. Um... It left in the second one is just really gone in this third one just because it's like okay like I can I can also un, I could see the meeting where some exec was sitting down and was like you know where we need to take the cheetah girls next Bollywood because that's like a big audience and that's a big whatever like it's like it very much felt like it was planned to further the cheetah girls brand rather than to like actually make a movie like I I think I was when we were watching it I was like this is basically like a visual album but not like a (laughs) yeah not an actual visual album (laughs) but it's like it's very much like we made a visual to sell albums yeah in that case not like not like a lemonade I'm not even saying that I'm literally saying that they made this to sell albums versus making a movie that then happens to have a soundtrack that accompanies it that sells a lot of albums, which is what happened with the first one and then somewhat with the second one. Um, but it's like by this one, you're very much just like, okay, so you guys just want needed a device. 
That's what this was. Yeah. And it's very, and then, and then because of that, like, you get that, like, this, there's this whole storyline with Dorinda, like, connecting with, <laughs> listen, <laughs> here's my main issue with this, with this film, is that they really have these girls just, like, eat, pray, love in their way through this country, yeah. and I'm not about it, yeah. I'm not about that in any circumstance, um, just because, like, people aren't backdrops, cultures aren't backdrops, like, they're not there to be a setting. Especially such a diverse one as in, like, it's just, yeah, like, it's just, like, it doesn't, it was entirely unnecessary, but she has this whole, this whole situation where she's, I guess elephants keep looking at her, and it's this whole thing where, <laughs> it's, like, I, like, I actually forget specifically what it is, but it's, like, Ganesh is... That's sort how of guiding her through this right. space and of just bringing she's up having, with her voice exactly voice. yeah of like her getting to a place where she can call her her ex back and be like we can be friends and having a grown conversation yeah like, exactly just essentially I mean they're all fair it's fine she's seventeen eighteen but still it's just <laughs> like this whole spiritual spiritual journey of the lightest member of this group through <laughs> the palest member of this group through Literally. India um. With the Indian god, like, choosing them and looking at her, you know, through through the animals, which, like, yes, has some rooting in real mythology and real tradition, but is also obviously a very Western, synthesized, boiled-down, white people, white people in their way across the globe <laughs> version of that, of those traditions and cultures. Yeah. Um... Yeah, just generally not a fan of it. No. Not a fan. It, it's and whenever didn't they do white it. mysticism, it's always just like, just why? Just even her like, she has to have the whole connection. They had to have the guru in here, and he's like sitting cross legged, wearing all white and orange, and being like, if you hang up the things on the tree, the tree will give it back to you, and like da 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 da. And it's like outside of their hotel, and it's like it, you know, Uncle G's accent was mad strong. Yeah, I think he's actually the only like, but I don't know Bollywood that, actor. But, but again, they probably, like they, to put, they probably told him to put it on. They probably told him to put it on even do stronger. That a lot. Oh yeah, no, that, especially during this time, that was a, <laughs> yeah, it's that like, was a thing. <laughs> it just felt. It just all felt a bit. It it, it felt un. It was Hollywood's version of Bollywood, <laughs> and and that is problematic because Bollywood is specifically not Hollywood. Hollywood. Like it's called Bollywood. And it exists outside of that tr- in the same way that like Nollywood is like that too. Mm-hmm. They just exist outside of the Western tradition. Right. They are engaging with cinema, not by the Western rules, and that is part of what makes them such. As a Western person, as someone who was born and raised in the West, like that's part of what's made engaging with them such like those particular uh, film industries such a like rewarding experience. On my end, and I know that's not necessarily something that most Americans do, but that, like, it's great because it's so different. And it's great because you do have to, you know, after a while you're watching, doing anything, you get sort of used to it. Mm -hmm. And you get very, and you guys don't even know how used to it most of you probably are, like, the way that the West tells stories. That you can expect certain things to happen at certain times. And we all sort of, I think, take for granted the fact that that is universal because it's really not. And if you go to different places, people tell stories in very, very different ways. Yeah. Um, Especially places whose contact with the West didn't start happening until after they started started telling stories, you know? Right. Um, for For whom, like, their formation had nothing to do with the West, which is, again, a large part of the globe. You know, because of all of the things that have happened with the history of colonialization and just Europe's sort of sweeping of the world, we forget about that, especially here where we're so steeped in it. And yeah, I just, you know, if you're going to do Bollywood, do Bollywood. Yeah. Don't do Hollywood Bollywood because it's not, it's not, it's not Bollywood and it's voyeuristic. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's not serving an ultimate purpose, and I think I was mentioning to you before this, why I don't understand how Disney has all these different versions of Disney all over the world. Like, it's like, they have a Disney India, they have a Disney Japan, they have a Disney UK, X, Y, and Z, and they have been, for years, like, 
creating their own content in each of these different places. So I'm like, I don't understand why you would not just take, you know, the kids that are on some Disney India show in India, create a decom with them, and then just blast that out to the masses all over the world in different Disneys. Like, it's just so... It was one of those things I didn't even realize until we started further talking about it with this, where I'm like, that doesn't make any sense because you could have introduced kids to so many different things. And, like, sure, I can understand if you want to be like, you know kids don't want to read subtitles or whatever, you could have even had them still in English and you could have done the same thing. And I think it just would have better served because then it would have been like, this is something that's authentic to the culture and that they're not making for a mainstream audience. They're making it for a local audience, but we're going to also blast it out to everybody. And I feel like it would have been a much better way to serve this and to serve a variety of other countries. Um, that I think just wasn't even, I don't even know if they ever considered it or maybe they thought that, before now, kids wouldn't be interested in it, but I think we've seen even with like how Netflix and Hulu and all these other um, streamers now have so much international content, and that's like the main thing that people watch. Yeah, you know, and it's like somebody you guys could have gotten into that really early, and it was just, it's just such a missed opportunity, and it was one that didn't need to be had with like Americans once again in the center. But I also think that's very American to be like nobody's gonna care unless we're in it like yeah and, and like it's 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 and it just doesn't it doesn't serve and I think they would have been better served having like just made a move an Indian movie <laughs> and then just blasted it out to everybody and been like okay this is our decom from Disney India this is what y'all are gonna watch this Friday kids don't care like they're just yeah. like okay <laughs> and it and it is like, I do think it really is just that simple, Chelsea, is that, like, it's a very, it's just very American to, like, assume, just, you know, it's, because I don't even know, like, I really do think it's something that, like, probably just never crossed their minds. It just, you know, there's this, there's this weird, like, Hollywood chokehold on the rest of the world, right? Where Hollywood yeah. just exports everything. Yep. Right? But it doesn't import anything Mm -hmm. um it doesn't sort of allow for that space and so i think it's a thing of like like netflix started making all of these international shows when it realized oh people are what like because people in the u.s can get korean soap operas right they're gonna they're watching they've been watching korean soap operas um and maybe not the older people watching netflix but the younger generations watching netflix like that's what they're that's what they're on here doing it's content that they couldn't get any other way. Right. So, okay, let's now capitalize on that. Like, that's what that is. All right. right. Let's start doing that. Let's put our hands in that. Let's, you know, take over, like, let's take Ter- Terrace House. Right. And make that a Netflix property. Or, like, like Elite is super popular right now, and yeah. it's literally a Spanish show, and I'm like, okay. You know, and, and that wasn't a thing. Yeah, and I think, I, think, I think Rita, they did that with, too. Like, yeah, shows where Rita. they, yeah, where they, you know, and, and... In some ways, it's great because there are shows that, you know, would have been canceled or, like, wouldn't have had a life if Netflix hadn't realized, oh, wow, people are really into this. Like, Mm -hmm. we should keep this up since, you know, its original studio is not willing willing to do that. But, yeah, I think it is just, I think we're, again, we're, like, getting to a place, I would hope we're getting to a place in terms of culture consumption, or not culture consumption, but, you know, art consumption. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant. Like, yeah. art is a form of culture. Don't consume other people's cultures. But yeah. <laughs> um, a place of, you know, artistic consumption um, or engagement might be the better way to put that. Where people's people are willing to step out of their comfort zones and engage globally, engage with variety. Um, and it might be because of technology, just because you literally have more access to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, before, it's, as you said, Disney didn't choose to put a Bollywood decom on, so our generation growing up, like, what was going to be our entry point into that? Right. You know? But Netflix just has international content on it, right? Right. It just happened to have it, so that's that generation's entry point into different things. Um, And I think that it's making people just more, just more open and more prepared to engage with different ways of looking at seeing all of that less afraid of subtitles yeah 
Which is, <laughs> thank God. <'cause... laughs> Bong Joon-ho did not lie when he said that thing last year. <laughs> like, yeah. About although, America. Although at the same time, I will say, like, I have I have this issue, um, and it, I've seen it very recently. Like, I, it's been on Netflix Netflix for a little bit, and I've seen recently that PBS has taken this up, and it's made me very upset. But this thing where, like, in documentaries, all right, listen, with the fiction, I, like, I would prefer that we didn't dub over live-action people, generally speaking, but with fiction, fine, whatever, yeah, let it be, right? As long as it's a choice, I don't care. Like, if I can choose to do the subtitles, I don't care. My issue is with documentaries that I've been watching recently. I've seen that, um, especially on, t- like, TV documentaries like PBS, specifically Nova episodes, where... When people are speaking and they're speaking a foreign language, they have a voiceover saying what the person is saying instead of using subtitles. And it's not a choice. Like, I can't opt into that when I'm watching it. And um, just this word that we've used before in reference to the rest of the Cheetah Girls movies, just this erasure, you know? Like, it's not okay. Don't do that. Don't. Don't dub over real people speaking. Yeah. Like, and then when you do it, don't choose people to do it who have accents. Because that defeats the purpose of what you're trying to do. I have no issue with an accent. But, like, if the whole point is so that I definitely clearly understand what's being said, why would you choose somebody with an accent? Like, it's just, it's just upsetting to me. It's a very personal quip, but also something I think. I just hate dubbing in general, personal. But that's a yeah. personal thing. I know some people like it. Um, <laughs> I just prefer subtitles, personally. Yeah, but I think it's all, again, it's all rooted in, you know, in this one, I didn't personally feel erased, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's because you were never on the table. That, that's <laughs> I really why. Was, I was not involved. Like, you, were, you were never on the table. Whatever on engagement I had with the second one... <laughs> Set it up so that by the time this one came out, I was not in, I was not involved. I had moved on with my life for sure. But, you know, like, you can argue that in this, you know, we take them somewhere and then we erase that place. Or we give mm-hmm. a very packaged, a very expected, a very stereotypical version of that place. And, you know, like, it's just something that as the world gets smaller and our perspectives get wider and bigger that we should all just you know stop doing yeah as often as we humanly can right and that's uh, we're also acknowledging this was made in 2008 so this was yeah it was was a very (laughs) different time period and also i think like the two of us were saying or i know for me personally like i didn't have any experience with bollywood prior to no, I didn't watch this, but I'm just saying, and that, and because I was like 14 or 13, like I wasn't watching this, but I didn't have any Bollywood, like any any entrance to Bollywood. I think until Slumdog Millionaire came out, actually the same year, but later on the same year. And I feel like for a lot of American people, that was their first access, assuming that obviously a that you aren't Indian, you know, from Southeast Asia in some way, or had like somebody close to you was from Southeast Asia. Um, who would have told you about, like, all of that. Like, I think, like, that was my first access to even Western view of Bollywood with Slumdog Millionaire. So this definitely, I think I can kind of see what somebody was trying to do. Maybe if we're going, like, they were trying to be somewhat altruistic, which is that, oh, we're going to open kids' minds to what Bollywood is. Yeah, I can, I can, I, I see that for sure. And I don't think it's, like I'm not I'm not mad that this exists, you know? It's just looking at it now through this lens. Yeah. Of, you know, where we're at now, where the world is now, there are problems. In the same way that, you know, looking back at you know, Disney has had other films yeah. that Song of the South. Like, there are problems. Right. Do I love it? Yes. Is it deeply not okay? Absolutely. So, you know, I don't necessarily yeah, I'm not necessarily, like, coming at, like, it coming out when it did, or assuming that there are any sort of nefarious, dark intentions with this, you know? It's Cheetah Girls One World. I really don't think there are. Like, even at the end, we have this whole, like, One World thing. And mind you, let's just be very clear. That (laughs) song has no, like, absolutely nothing to do with anything that happens in that film before it. 
Yeah. Not a damn thing. No. That, they really threw that in at the end just to be like, oh yeah, like we're out here in India. And to the make it is connect small. to the to the title, I guess. But I, I don't know. But there is nothing about there is nothing about this film that is about like one world. But I will say this was very 2008 in terms of that was oh, the yeah. year that Barack got elected, so everybody thought we were living in a post-racial America. Yeah. By everybody, I mean the white people. <laughs> so. <laughs> the, ah, 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 I do some I do some non white people who thought that too. I won't name them, but <laughs> I think I there, there was this. a lot of bamboozlery. That's a lot of yes. confusions yes. around the post racial America, but I think everybody was very much feeling this idea of like we're all one world, one life, one love, one yeah. song, you know? And so it's like it very much felt it fell into that two thousand eight, two thousand and nine like period of like yeah. This that whole ideology was very popular, and a lot of people related to it, and kids probably felt it. Yeah, too. and I'm sure that kids. I imagine that children loved this. Like I, well, if any okay, of y'all were like younger during yeah, when this younger came out, kids, let yeah, us know. Not like, I, like let us know if you guys actually like. Here's really the thing, like my this. I my sister sort of I brought up the Teenage Girls to her, and she was kind of like she's five years younger than me. Um, and I brought up the Teenage Girls to her, and she was like. Oh, like I don't I don't know if the second or the third one is my favorite. Like that's what she immediately said. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> I was so deeply confused. But again, that would make sense because she was probably around eight. Yeah, when this when came this out. came out. Right. Eight or nine. So I can that's like that's when I'm like, I am sure kids loved it. But again, it's just a thing of, you know, looking at it now from where we are now and again not having a nostalgic connection to this right we weren't kids when we saw it we don't know the songs like we're just taking it at face value for what it is Mm -hmm. in 2020 like i'm sure in 2008 it was cute and it was beloved 2021 but right yeah it is 2021 all that new year (laughs) stuff it it messes me up till like june if i'm honest (laughs) with myself (laughs) i'll just let y'all know like i have to erase dates all the damn time (laughs) um but yeah like it's just those aspects of it that one world aspect of it just doesn't hold up the same way no Um, (laughs) it doesn't it doesn't track it we now look we can now look at it and say oh like it's actually not it's one world and it's hollywood's world (laughs) you know what i mean and this it's, it's a western world like this is actually not this isn't representative of the space that you're in uh and in that vein it sort of suggests you know then why are we here right why are we here and also because i just know like why are we here why were we in barcelona there is no scenario where i shooting in either of those places was cheaper than shooting in toronto no nope. i don't believe it so it was an active choice that was made it was it was it completely was um and then you know just kind of like just a note, um, I just have this theory that the Kardashians were dressing Adrian throughout this entire <laughs> film because uh, the things that she wears, if you if you guys don't remember, this was when Adrian was dating Robert Kardashian. It really was. So, um, <laughs> so she the way she's wearing the things she wears are very much like 2008 what Kim Kardashian would have been wearing. <laughs> like I'm talking about snatch waist, honey. Okay, like she is wearing a little dresses her little like you know like all the things that were popular back then but like that all the the kardashian type girls are wearing that's what she's wearing and disney normally does not allow that they really don't so i was like somebody had to make a deal i don't know if chris was over here making that deal for her <laughs> probably and was like listen she's oh, bringing no. my she's bringing my girl stylist with her and y'all are gonna let her wear what she wants to wear because she literally looks like yeah, it is very. I mean, she I looks could, stylistically different from Dorinda and Aqua. <laughs> I guess you can argue that she's trying to be a pop star yeah. one day. So they were maybe very much giving her a J Lo, but it just it still it feels right. Like Disney is very like like Disney doesn't do snatch waist; they do baby doll. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like there were like there were too many curves. I was like, mm. <laughs> like like she was this over here looking like she you... had a full hourglass like multiple times. It was yeah. very like oh, okay. They usually cover that up. Right. See Raven. <laughs> in everything. Yes. As much as they physically can at yes. any time. No, they love covering that up. They, <laughs> just they, just a fun random note, but it was just like, huh. It is. There's okay. also there are, I mean there are little there are little things in this that are just 
you know, like, we get another friendship ballad that's cute. Mm-hmm. They have their, like, argument over the wishes they make. Because um, Dorinda wants everything to stay the same. And I don't remember what Aquanetta wanted, but Chanel wanted them to be I think Aqua stars. wanted a man. And did she want Because she man? took it down. Or did she want... <laughs> she, <laughs> that's what... Yeah, that's yeah, she's that like, I wanted, wanted to meet Kevin 790. <laughs> and then, so as soon yeah, as she Yeah, and they were she, like, yours is selfish or something like that. And she was just like, well... She met her man. Uh, anyway, the point, like, and on, yeah, on that note too, like, I don't love that it's become so man focused by the end of and this. Romance focused, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. like, it's just, it's so far from where we began. It's just so far on from the where streets we began. of New York. Yeah, and it's just, and it was better at the start. <laughs> it was because even Derek and um, his little friend. You know, they were, like, literally side characters to, to the first movie. Like, yeah, they were barely in they there. Were, yeah, they and the rest important. of the girls don't even have, like, They became paramours. their band at the end. Yeah. They, like, were there to, they were there to play the guitar. They were literally supposed to... He was, like, supposed to have, like, Galleria, and then the other girls don't even have significant... Other, like, it was just, in like... In case you were wondering who the star of the film was. <laughs> literally. Galleria was the star of that film. Um, But it was just so different. And even in the second one, it took that turn. Yeah, it started... You started getting it a bit in the second one, but... Again, because it was like a single foot, and we are we already did the whole thing where we we talked about all this, right? Um, but yeah, I just didn't because you know they're they're going off to college or you know entering the workforce, beginning their lives as adults is the point, like, mm-hmm. and just just like this idea that like I just don't love that that was the focus of, like, this summer. Like, it could have been... Disney had a chance to do something about something else. Yeah. Um, And they didn't. You know, it could have been... We could have actually engaged with culture. You know what I mean? They could have actually gone to India and gone to India. um, And gone to different parts of India. I mean, right. that might have been out of budget for them, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Like, and instead, it's just this... Yeah. Yeah. And it's these men pitting them against... And again, like, all of this is me looking at it with the lens of, you know, late 20s and jaded. But, you yeah. know, it's, you know, these, like, these boys, when they, whether they intend to do it or not, pitting these girls against each other and them falling for it. It's just, like, this is not... This isn't what I signed up for when I watched the first one. No. I don't believe. No, and it wouldn't go to their original characters either. Like, it really don't make no sense. Aquanetta is not who she was when we began. Yeah, this yeah. show. All three of them are kind of, you know. <laughs> Dorinda might still be who she is because you know, <laughs> she has abandonment issues and she's looking for looking for stability. Her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Not even like that's like I can understand how why she responds to Joaquin the way she responds because you know abandonment issues and need of stability. That's, right, tends to be the case with. Yeah. You know. Well, no, it's just it. It's her. It's her. It's the case with her. <laughs> it's the case with her. <laughs> um. But yes. No. I think overall it was. Eh. I don't know if you guys can tell. We're just. We're. I'm exhausted. At the end of watching these three movies, I am so tired because I was so happy, and they have steadily brought me down on <laughs> this. On this. And they even deep, messed up the deep. music, which is like, this one's like, it's, it's the like audacity. every time. And I actually, here's the thing, I don't know which one I don't like more, the second or the third. I actually really can't tell you. Yeah, I don't know. But the I just. The second had better songs, I will say that. I would just, I discourage anyone from watching beyond the first one. Yeah, would you I don't let, think it's Would necessary. you let the babies? I mean, I'll let them, but again, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna be there. Like, yeah, no. don't. Yeah. I would just rather, like, watch a Bollywood movie with them. Like, <laughs> yeah. this, this is, this, just watch this. Yeah. And just imagine Adrian Bailon. And no, it. actually, don't imagine <laughs> Adrian Bailon. Like, you don't need to do that, because all of the action, like, and I'll tell you one thing for Bollywood, they know how to cast. They do. Like, no. Well, ha, ha, ha. Well, they have no colorism pun issues. In te- no pun intended, but, but it's yes. there, so let's let it rock. I'm done. But, um... Yeah, they're like that was my whole other issue, by the way. Is the I was like, in what world is Kevin, aka Amar, 
is his mother ever going to be happy with yeah kids? she was like with real, aqua. she was real like, happy i'm like with, let's be 100 like, percent real here i'm y'all. just gonna be real she is not about to let this black girl and be like oh you're gonna be the maharaja's <laughs> wife Texas. now this is not speaking for everybody in india of course because everybody is different we're saying that i'm just saying it wouldn't have been as easy as they tried this to would make not it have seem. been like some american black no ma'am <laughs> No, ma'am. <laughs> and I and get why. why. I understand why, but like, it's not. In what world would that have ever happened? Like, we're over here living in a full fantasy world. <laughs> a okay? full fantasy world. A full world. fantasy. And they don't even give you enough of the fantasy to justify it. It was just like, wait, hold up. I remember I saw that and I was like, no. You know what it is? This is a flat film. Yeah. In all ways, shapes, and form that that word can apply to this film and the sounds of this film, it is a flat the film. The music was flat. They were flat. <laughs> the dancing was flat. Flat! It was a flat film. Yeah, it didn't give you it. It didn't give me anything I could feel. Okay? Did yeah. not give me anything I could feel. Um, in terms of watching, if you haven't seen it, don't bother. Um, if you want, If you have seen it and maybe you have fond memories... Sure, girl. Um, <laughs> go, 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 ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. But if you haven't seen it, I don't. I just wouldn't bother because I'm just like, there's some. Just watch a Bollywood film. Literally, support the Indian like film industry itself. No, they don't, I promise. Let me just make this clear. They don't need your money. They, they really don't at all. <laughs> at all. But um, yeah, man. Just yeah. Just go watch. watch it. Literally watch something else. Literally watch anything else. There's so many. Watch a Hollywood film. Watch an Indian TV show. They're, like, all over Netflix and Prime oh, now. No, I mean, like, watch anything else. Like, watch a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> like, go watch The Good Place. Like, you're about to say anything that. else. Yeah, no, no, no. Seriously, though. This, don't don't waste your time on this. There's a reason that Raven said that there were issues. Um, <laughs> there were clearly She issues. has never lied on this, in regards to this. Okay. In regards to this. <laughs> I was like, mm. No, in regards to this, she did not lie when it came to the Cheetah Girls. I do love our caveats. They're so nice when we have to <laughs> toss them in there. But yeah, honestly, on that note, we could really sit here for another 20 minutes just saying how much we didn't enjoy it. Um, but but we I, don't think waste time. I think we've made the point. Yeah. And with that, we will see you guys, talk to you guys. Next communicate week. Communicate next week. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of The Critics Kingdom. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and SoundCloud so you can stay up to date as well as interacting and letting us know what you guys think on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Critics Kingdom and on Instagram at The Critics Kingdom. We're excited to talk to you again next week.